Hi Stampers! Welcome to Happy Stamping Studio. This is Judy Anderson at judystamps.com. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited to bring you guys this card today. We are going to be using, well first of all we're going to be making this adorable card. It's called a gatefold card. It's a special technique. It's a special fold card so it's a technique. We're going to be using a new stamp set over the moon this was just released in our 2019 annual catalog is aren't these guys adorable i just love them i just love 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 them now we're going to pair that up with the love what you do stamp set this is a stamp set that i've had since last year it was introduced in last year's catalog and many of you have it so we why not use it right we're going to be using these two images in this set aren't those can you guess what for those are our spots on our paper that our background paper that I made so you want to learn what else we're going to use so we're going to be using those two stamp sets we are going to be using a piece of five and a half by eight and a half poppy parade cardstock a piece of four by five and a quarter whisper white one piece of three no, two and three quarters by four Poppy Parade, and then a piece of two and a half by three and three quarter Whisper White. That's it on the paper. Easy peasy. Now, as far as some of the tools we're using, we are going to be using the Stamparatus. I'm going to show you how to cut and score for the card base. So we're going to be using our paper trimmer. We're also going to be using an old olive and pear pizzazz classic ink pads, a memento tuxedo black, and then we're going to be using some blends. We are going to be using the light balmy blue, the light calypso coral, an ivory, the dark real red, and the dark and light basic black. In addition to that, we're going to need you're going to need some scissors and an aqua painter. And I love our new cleaning pad. This is our new cleaning ink pad, which I love especially with the stamp apparatus because it's so much smaller and you can get your clean stamps clean and a piece of chamois. Um, I've cut my chamois up into three pieces. So we're we'll using a piece of that and some snail and a bone folder. So what do you say? Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start by learning how to score for our card base. We're going to take our five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock. We're going to put it into our paper trimmer. And let me zoom in a little bit. I, mean, I might have to move my paper trimmer, but that's okay. I want you guys to see these. So we need to score at two and an eighth. So see that's two inches, that's two and a quarter. In between there, there's that medium line, or if you want to count the tick marks, I've got a customer that tick, so I have to tell her how many tick marks. It's the second tick mark past the two. So we're going to line that up there, making sure that you're firmly against that guide. Remove our cutting blade and we're going to score it. We're now going to flip this around and do the same exact thing from the other side. We're going to go to the two and an eighth and score. That's it for that. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to flip it over so that your mountain or the bump is on the inside. Can you see that? Let me see. I can't, yeah, right there. That angle, you can see that. That's the mountain. The valley is on the other side. It's hard to see on this paper. Right there. So that indent. So we want to fold it so the mountain is in the middle. And I am going to zoom back out. There we go. It took a minute. Let's zoom back out so that you guys can see what's happening here. Okay, so I'm going to fold on that score line. I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to burnish that. You want to burnish your fold so your flap stays down. Same thing with the other end. And those two centers should meet. Okay, and burnish that so it lays flat. We're done with that for a while. We'll, we'll revisit our card base in a little bit. But let's get some stamping done, okay? 
So we are going to take a piece of graph paper underneath. I am going to take the two pieces that measure one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. Now these are a quarter inch smaller than this area here, than this flap. So it's one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. And I am going to place them together on my paper to stamp. I have placed the two stamps from the Share What You Love set, or I mean, I'm sorry, Love What You Do set on a block. I'm going to grab my Memento ink right here and just start stamping. Now these images aren't solid, so it's okay if you have white spots. Cows, you guys, they don't have solid spots on them. They have a little bit of white in there. Sometimes the black and white cows even have brown in their spots, which amazed me. I didn't realize that until we went to a local um, farm in the area with the grandkids, and they had some farm animals there for them, of course, and they had some cows, and I noticed that some of the spots that looked black to the eye, once I got up close to them, they had a little bit of brown in them. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you're stamping on these, that you also stamp off the edges and close to the edges, so that you don't have what I call an angel card. You get a halo going around it. Okay, let's close that back up. And let me show you, for those of you that have not used a stamp cleaner, watch this. These are great for your photopolymer stamps. Yes, it looks gunky there, but don't worry, the ink goes away. doesn't stay on your stamp. And look how easy. You do want to wipe them off with your chamois and just some plain water afterwards. That's what the instructions say. And that just helps protect your stamps. But it cleans off your photopolymer stamps awesomely. So we're going to set these two aside with our card base because we'll put our card all together all at one time. Okay, let's pull out our Stamparatus. Okay, so I've got the one arm there and the other arm here. Now for those of you that have watched my videos before or my Facebook Lives, I hope you've visited me on my Facebook page, Judy Anderson, Judy Stamps, over at Facebook. I do Facebook Lives and teach you all kinds of things more often than I do on YouTube. So, I always use this right here. This, oops, I have to move this up a little bit. Let me see if I can get it. So I use this logo as my starting point. I don't use the edges of my Stamparatus. It's, I've done that from the start and have had no problems and no issues. I'm going to line my paper up to the square here and just take my magnet and just put it on the corner. Now I'm going to show you how quick it is to stamp this front piece. We're going to place our bottom cow and our cows it going words up here, making sure they're straight, and then this little love bubble is what I'm calling it. We're going to place it right here. Okay, so we're going to be stamping all of those at one time. Now, we do want to make sure that we're out of the way of our this cow. So I'm just holding it over and so I can put this up just a little bit more like this. And we're a-okay. -okay. So now it doesn't matter which flap you flap over. I am going to go ahead and, oops, I don't want my stamps to go on my label so I'm going to flip it over. Just give it a gentle press. Okay, now we're going to take our Memento ink we're going to ink all those stamps up at one time. So we're getting all of those on in one swoop, as I call it. And just massage it a little bit. Make sure you get a good impression. Perfect! Now, I've already made a mask. 
and I will be talking about making masks over at Facebook in just a little bit today. So go ahead over there if you've never made a mask before. And we're just going to place that over the cow. Now, when you're masking, it's important to remember whatever image you want to be in the foreground, you want to stamp first. And now we're going to stamp this guy on here, and we want her to land so that her elbow is on the back of the cow. So she's not floating in the air. So it looks like she's actually sitting on his back. Now we're going to take the second arm and push it down. Okay, we're going to take our memento ink, ink that cow up, and swoosh. She's on there, and she looks great, doesn't she? Actually, it looks like kind of a mess right now because of that. But before I remove that mask, I'm going to show you how easy it is to clean these stamps. I'm just taking the stamp cleaner, patting it on my red rubber stamps. And just like that. Take my chamois and wipe it off. I, just, I pat them and that's it. Those are all done. So let's remove the mask and see what she looks like before we move our paper. Ta-da! Cute, huh? I just love it. I love masking. I love stacking things on top of one another. Now remember when you put your Stamparatus away, you never want to keep both your arms on here because you will end up breaking one because they don't close all the way. So we're just going to put that one here and this one laying on top of there. And let's start coloring. But before I start coloring, I do want to grab out the inside of my card because we do need to stamp a cow on the inside. Let's do... You know what? I'm going to change it up a little bit. This time, I'm going to do this gal in there. And hoping that this block that I have is large enough. We're just going to put her down here. Oh, it is! Love it! So exciting. I've been using the other cow on the inside when I've been doing this card. So I just wanted to change it up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to start coloring. So we have all our images here. I recommend that you do all your coloring at the same time. I'm going to take the light Calypso Coral, and that is going to be for the inside of the ears. And the coloring goes very quickly. Um, I urge you not... I don't know... I. I have a lot of customers that sit there and really really color a lot. I don't. Then we're going to use the ivory for the muzzle. And for, oh, I forgot these guys' nostrils, didn't I? Oh, we'll get that real quick. I do leave white space when I color. Let's not forget his udders. I always leave out her udders. I had a customer last night correcting me. Um, it would be a she, not a he, if it has udders. I don't know. Do male cows have udders? Let's grab our light real red, do our heart. And once again, like I said, I leave white space to create dimension. So I left two little white lines there. Do you want me to zoom in? Would that help a little bit? When I'm coloring, there we go. That's about as far as I can zoom in though because otherwise I'll be off camera. And I know you guys like it when I'm on camera. I've gotten some comments that sometimes I've been off. I'm going to go around the heart because that would leave a shadow there. And you'll notice that when I use my blends, I color in a circular motion, and I didn't color that in solid because I want it light and fluffy, kind of like a um, cloud. Now we're going to do all the spots. Let's get these spots in, in these guys. How many of you love cows? I, you know, I loved our pig set that came out in the annual catalog, and we still have it. I just went 
crazy over that set and my customers I'll be honest with you when it first came out they weren't too crazy with it but once I started showing them cards that we could do and so many fun cards they all had to have it they all bought it forgot the big spot on his back I have felt the same about this I knew I needed this set right when it came out and my customers can attest to that in class yesterday a couple of them um, I had some people, newer customers, clients, and then I had some that have been with me for a while. And they did come at the go. She did tell us that when she first saw that catalog and gave it to us, she said, Oh, these cows. I love these cows. I've noticed now my bell on the inside cow, I didn't account for that. And bells are usually yellow, but we're going to do a red bell just because I don't have my yellow blend here, any of my yellow colors. You'll notice I'm leaving white spaces on, on these guys too. Okay, I think, oh, his hair here. And you'll notice I use the small edge end of my blends rather than the brush end. I use the brush end when I do large areas. Otherwise I find that the small is just fine. So we're going to do this bell and we're going to do it red. What the heck? Okay, so we're done coloring and we just have a couple more things and then we can assemble this guy. So much fun. Okay, we're going to go to our old olive ink pad and get back to our over the moon set and we have this little grass image so we don't want this guy floating in air too so we're going to just put some tufts of grass under him and like I've always said you want to do it in groups odd numbers so I did five on the outside three on the inside I'll clean my stamp real quick now I'm going to grab my aqua painter you wouldn't have to do this. I think that that would be enough, um, just like that. But I wanted to do a wash, and when I use my aqua painter, I take my brush and I start where there's no ink, and I just run that edge into the ink. Okay? When I, I'm going to zoom in, whoops, wrong way. Let me make sure I'm in the camera. Okay, so when I color with my aqua painter, I start with my tip up and then I push the entire brush down. So I start with it up off the paper, push down, and color. Okay, if you want more color, you go back in and grab more color. That's it. Look how fast that was to color, color that grass. So many of you dip through the inside of it and just take it and just color off the tip like this. So let me move this one up and I'll show you again. Oops, sorry. I want to, it's hard when it's zoomed in. I want to take the tip and run into the color and out. Take the tip, start up, push down, and color. And we want to get all the way up to that cow. I'm going to grab a little bit more color and do a little bit of a shadow under him because he's laying on that grass. So that would cause the grass underneath him to be a little bit darker. Okay, so let's zoom back out so you can see what I'm doing and not get a headache, right? Let, let me position everybody. Take this mat out, grab all my pieces, and we're going to start putting this baby together. First thing, you want to line up your center line. And in a minute you'll realize why. We're going to flip this one over and put adhesive on it. And I want to line it up to that center line. Okay, I don't want... a gap of red on the inside because I actually want these to butt up. Make sure that you have this laying the same way so that these line up. I just think that that makes it look more of a professional card by doing that. You wouldn't have to line those up, but I just think that that's an added touch. 
Okay, and just rub that on. You know with your snail you want to rub that. Okay, we're going to attach this to our mat. Oh, it's been so beautiful here this week. I am loving the weather that we've had. Okay, rub that. Now, I want it attached to the left side on this one, so I'm just going to put a little bit of tape along the edge there, and then along only the one edge on this mat, because we don't want this mat sticking, because then they wouldn't be able to open the card. You can center it, you can put it off center. I'm going to go ahead and center it. And rub that open your card up and for the inside now I do leave the inside usually blank if I have an, a saying on the outside because this you know cow is it going you know it could be for somebody that's been sick it could be for a birthday card or you know congratulations card you know this is just a fun card and by leaving that inside it makes it more flexible for you to use and by doing that, if you make multiple cards, then you can stash these away and use them for different people for different occasions. And might as well make three or four, or five or six while you have your Stamparatus set up, right? So that's pretty much for our special fold today. I hope you enjoyed it and give it a try. And you know, if you do give it a try, head over to my Facebook page and share it on there and we'll all give you kudos. So thank you again for taking your time out of the day to watch my videos and I, you can find all the featured Stampin' Up! supplies at my online store by visiting judystamps.com and until next time, happy stamping everybody. Bye bye.